Welcome to the Autosportradio.com 2021 show. We are still at the Grant King Race Shops at 8155 Crawfordsville Road in Indianapolis. And if you want to stop and see a race car being built, rebuilt, fixed, done, whatever they're doing to it, stop by because Top Gun is housed and garage right here and they work on a car here every day. So if you, get, if you want to see what it's like, come on down, take a look. Today's show is presented by Honda and Honda HPD, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the NTT IndyCar Series, uh, SVRA, and uh, McGilvery's Pub and Eatery and Speedway, and VP Insurance. A couple of things. If you uh, can't wait to see a dentist, I got one that you will say that. I can't wait to see. They're phenomenal. It's the Indy Dental Group. Uh, Indy 500 veteran Dr. Jack Miller and his wife, Dr. Liz Lewis, have a spectacular practice. The people there are phenomenal. You'll love it. It's time to see a dentist. I highly recommend you go see them. Make an appointment. The number is 317-846-6125. And uh, it came out that Robin Miller is back riding. I guess he's going to be back riding again, so he's coming along reasonably well. But Bob Jenkins uh, still needs your thoughts and prayers. He's having a struggle. So if you can think of it, think of Bob. You think you need a, a roof repair or a roof replacement? Do the good thing call Reed Roofing. Talk to my IT genius, Ted. He will take care of you, set everything up. So give him a call. His number is 317-500-3370. Have your roof looked at, and if you need to get an estimate, they can do it. My computer guy, Steve Freeze, has an office. He's located at 549 Fleming Street, which, just, which is just west of uh, Lyndhurst on Washington Street. That's right the next building off the corner behind a dental office. So if you have a problem, call him, tell him your problem. If you can't get to his shop, he can come to you. His number is 317-938-7711. And as the uh, insurance commissioner says, when you go to renew your insurance, check around. Once they get comfortable with you, they tend to kind of increase the price. So check it out. And I recommend with wholeheartedly VP insurance and Speedway. Give Mike Pardee a call. Tell him what you're looking for. If it's a car, a commercial property, your home, or uh, life insurance, Mike can help you. Give him a call. Tell him what you're looking for. You'll be surprised you get better coverage for less money. It's 317-248-0070. Um, you know, you wonder yourself, why do these guys and gals like driving these Indy cars? Well, why don't you find out and take a ride in a two-seater with the Indy Racing Experience? You can go online to IndyRacingExperience.com and find a date that will work for you and book it. And in the uh, promo box, put DK1, you get a 50% discount. Or you can call Shonda at the office. The number is 317-243-7171. And if you wanted a uh, vintage car, Indy car, Sprint car, Midget car, but you got to restore, you have one that needs to be restored, call the Grand King Shops. They can help you in both ways. The number is 317-820-35. Nine five, and then, uh, this weekend they're running at Nashville, and the Trans Am series will be there. So if you're going down to Nashville, take a look. You're going to see a great race. Trans Am is back alive again. So check it out. They're going to be there. And while you're at it, go to svra.com and subscribe to their magazine, Speed Tour. You get some great stories, great pictures. Some of the drivers that were in Trans Am originally and in the IndyCar are still driving cars in the vintage events. So uh, Check it out. And while you're there, click on the uh, subscription tour and get the Speed Tour magazine. And while you're there, also look at the schedule. See if there's an event coming up that's near you. Go see it. You'll love it. My guest today is somebody, if you are smart and have Trackside online, you read him all the time. He covers not only IndyCar, but he also covers the Road to Indy program. Very accomplished writer. And when you read something that's put out on Trackside, you can Almost rest assured, 99.999 accurate. My guest is Steve Wittick. And Steve, thanks for taking the time, because I know you're packing up to head to Nashville, you think, leaving tomorrow uh, yeah. morning. Uh, yes, I am. I'm leaving first thing tomorrow morning, and I'm extremely excited about going down there. I think it should be a really fun event. And um, it's been good to get back on the road again and, and get to these events and get to hang out with some fans again. That's what I enjoy. Yeah, well, I think the other thing that I enjoy is I read what you put out, and uh, you seem to have, not you seem, you do have good rapport with teams, team owners, sponsors, drivers, uh, uh, series officials, and so forth. So 
when I read it, I usually pass it on because I know it's 99% accurate. Well, and, thank you. and it was announced yesterday, and you posted it as well, that uh, uh, Ricardo Yunkos has now got a partner, and they're going to run three of the final races in IndyCar and going for a full season starting next year. Uh, yeah, that's uh, really exciting news. I kind of got wind of it a few weeks ago. Um, and, you know, I couldn't couldn't put the pieces completely together until whatever day, yes, the day before yesterday, um, finally figured out who the partner was. And um, it's really exciting uh, for Ricardo. Uh, Brad Hollinger's got, he was a partner in Williams F1 team. I think he owned up to 15% of it at one point, um, sold it when the Williams family got out. So, uh, he's in the healthcare business here in the U.S., owns a bunch of long-term care homes and manages hospitals and the like, and huge racing fan. And uh, he's been involved in, in the 500 before and uh, been talking to Ricardo for quite a while about putting something together. And finally, they got it got it sorted out and he'll become a partner and it'll be Junko's Hollinger Racing and, um, you know, last three races of the year and then planning on being full-time next year. I think the interesting thing I, I read the other day, and you, it may have been through you as well, that they're expecting like 28 cars in Nashville. Uh, yeah, I think we'll have 27 in Nashville. There's a couple that um, we're maybe going to be there that aren't. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's the largest race outside of Indy. And I think since 2011, maybe I would need to go back and double check my records, but uh, yeah, 27 cars is still great. It's the 25 we've had at every race. And then, uh, obviously, Elio and Ferrucci as well. So it's a, a big field. And I think we're going to, you know, we'll have the same number. We'll have even one more car when we add Top Gun at, at the IMS road course. So uh, the last, you know, six races of the year are going to be well subscribed, as I like to say. And that bodes well for next year. I think the interesting thing is when other series seem to be having a little bit of a problem, IndyCar is going the opposite direction. They are growing. And as you are aware, I'm sure that uh, uh, Jimmy Vassar with Vassar Sullivan will stay with uh, Dale Coyne through 22, but in 23, they're starting their own team. So that's another team coming on board. Right. And uh, uh, the, uh, the young man from Chicago driving in the uh, Indy Light Series, yeah. like we had discussed, he is uh, primed to get a ride because I understand he's got the sponsorship to carry it. So that certainly will get him a seat somewhere. Yes, it certainly will. And I know that uh, that David Malukas you're talking about and they're uh, I know they're talking to a bunch of teams right now. But as you know, they've also got their Indy Lights team with four cars. So, you know, there's a chance that, you know, if they find the right people, they can probably do something on their own as well. So but that it's um, with the new car coming in a couple of years, starting your own fresh team next year doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Right. Like it just doesn't you know, that's a lot of capital outlay for one year so it makes sense if you can if you can partner with someone that already has the extra chassis and the equipment then you can uh, it's good for everybody then that, that team has a chance to you know make sure all the parts get used and they don't have anything left over when we go to a new car um did did the announcement of elio signing for a full year next year uh did that kind of start the ball rolling for what is termed as silly season yeah, I think it did. It, it obviously started before that, you know, a lot of talks going on, but yeah, that was the first of many dominoes to fall. Um, you know, and I think the bigger surprise that it well, that wasn't Elio coming back full time with Shank. It was more that he's going to be in the car that Jack Harvey was driving and Jack's got, sounds like Jack's got another opportunity. I, I have an idea who it's with, but I don't know a hundred percent. And uh, you, like you said, I won't, I'm not going to, I won't, uh, spill the beans if I don't know a hundred percent on what it is, or if I don't have some sort of confirmation. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think Jack will still be in the series, which is a good thing. I think he's proven that he's got the pace and um, you know, they've just, I think he must've found an opportunity to move on to a team with a little bit more experience. Um, you know, they had some issues this year with some of the strategy and, you know, mechanical issues. So I think, he found an opportunity to, to move on to a probably more established team is my guess. Well, it's, you know, it's a shame. Uh, but I think first off having uh, Romain Grosjean here is, is phenomenal. The sad part is the rumor is he's probably leaving at the end of the year and going elsewhere and poor Dale oh. Coyne. 
Yeah, yeah, you have to feel for Dale, right? I, I don't think it's a done deal yet, for sure. Like, I just don't. It's, you know, I know that Romain and his wife really like the, the family atmosphere of coin. But, you know, if you're that kind of driver, you do have to look at your your options. And, you know, again, he's another name of, you know, you've heard everybody said Andretti, but I've heard a couple other places. So I'm not going to pencil him in at Andretti yet, because it's just, I think there's he's going to have options. He's shown that he's... He's very good. And from everything I understand, he acquitted himself very well at his test. Um, he actually spun once at his test on the oval and said he didn't hit anything. So that was a good thing. Um, but yeah, I think he really, uh, I think he took to that pretty quickly. So I think you'll see him, you know, in, you know, and the thing is with IndyCar now, right. There's, there's no poor team. You can win with anybody. Right. Uh, you can be in championship contention with everybody. Um, you know, is it, it's going to take, you know, a Dale coin being perfect every weekend, but that can happen. Uh, you know, we've seen Justin Wilson be in the top five in the championship there. So it, it can happen. And Dale, and Dale has got win under his belt. Finally, after uh, it took him like 20 some odd years to get his win and he got one and it was kind of neat to be there when he did, because the entire pit row was lined with, Congratulations for him. That was great to see. He's, he's been at it a long time and he loves it. Dale is one of those people that's universally loved in the, by, by the insiders of the sport. He's just, he's a racer, right? He just, that's what he does. He comes back every year. He tries his best to put together a good team and, um, you know, he does it with, with a less budget and that it's a good opportunity for drivers that, that maybe don't have as much of a budget or, you know, don't have a budget at all. Like, Grosjean who you know wanted to come over and try it out he's a great spot for those people and he puts together a good team and I know he treats his drivers really well too well there's also talk about uh Ryan Hunter Ray moving on uh, it's kind of up in the air what will happen with James H James Hinchcliffe yeah. uh, do you see those guys moving at all uh yeah I definitely see both of those guys moving um you know, I, there's a chance they'll come back, but I, I don't think so. I think if you had to pin me down, I'd say they'll both be back, but maybe in, in reduced roles. Um, you know, I know they both want to be back full time, but there's not a ton of seats, but there is going to be a lot more sports car seats because of the, you know, there's a lot more manufacturers coming into that with that LMDH platform. So I think you'll see some of those guys like, Ryan Hunter Ray, Bourdais, you know, Kanan will be back next year, but there's some of those guys who are, are near the end of their career who can end up, you know, still driving another 10 years at the top level in a sports car, um, you know, and have a chance to go to Le Mans. And so there's, you know, it's, it's, it actually is a really good time to be, to think about retiring. Cause you know, five years ago, those guys had nothing. There wasn't near the interest in the sports cars. So there wasn't as much for them to do now. Now they've got a place to go. Uh, I think the other interesting part is with uh, currently three former uh, F1 runners, uh, Marcus Erickson, Felix Rehnquist, and of course, uh, Romain Grosjean here. I understand that there's been a, a one or two F1 tests of drivers and there's others that are looking to come this way. Yeah, there is. I think you'll, uh, I think you'll see probably at least one more former formula one driver next year. Um, it's always hard to say, right. They don't, uh, it just depends. They, those guys are always up for, you know, other seats, you know, Formula E's attractive, you know, World Endurance Championships. There are other attractive spots, but um, I think everybody, you know, a lot of them are seeing the success that, that grows on. And, and then even more so the guy like Erickson, how much success he's having and how much fun it looks like they're having. I think that's, you know, I think that's a big part of it, right? You come from Formula One. That's just, I mean, it is just so intense and so competitive and you know you don't get a chance to to be friends with the other drivers or even your teammate and here you do it's different um and those guys it's it's kind of a, a throwback to when they were racing carts or in the junior formulas where it's a closer and tighter knit paddock and and you know that's something that you, you have to have fun doing your job right like you know you don't if you make good money but it's good if you have fun doing your job um you know, that's what we all want to aspire to. So it's, uh, yeah, I think you'll see a few more guys show some interest. I'm not sure who exactly it'll be. Um, you know, we've heard Hulkenberg's name. 
I've heard Alex at Ender Albon's name. I've heard Daniel Kvyat's name. So yeah, there's and Kevin Magnuson, obviously, uh, you know, there, there's four or five guys that probably would fit really well in IndyCar. I think a guy like Daniel Kvyat, Kvyat would fit really well in IndyCar. His driving style would suit. He's aggressive. He's good on the brakes. You know, I think a guy like him and, and you look back to someone like him who was so successful in the junior formulas and IndyCar, you know, is it at the highest level, but it races more like a junior formula level car where the driver matters more than it does in, in the F1 level. And, you know, I think that's, you know, someone like Danny Kafiat, that's a really attractive, right? You, you've done really well when you've been in GP3 and um, the other junior formula. So you've got to look at it and go, well, these teams over here are a lot more equal than an F1. Maybe I have a chance. And that's what uh, Rojan has indicated that he loves it because you have to drive these cars. He said in Formula One, you got traction control and you've got so much downforce. All you do is turn it and t- hope you turn it at the right time. Uh, but he's enjoying driving these cars. So it's back in his hands again. And I'm sure it, it caught him by surprise on the oval. So I'm not, it wasn't surprised to hear that he looped it, but he did that at Barber and figured out, Oh, this is a different kind of car. You got to drive this one. And he, he learned. So exactly. I, I expect him to do pretty well. I would say reasonably well at the, at the gateway or at the worldwide technology. I, I expect him to do very well there. And you've got to remember going back a couple of years, that team has had really good cars there too, right? You, was it maybe two years ago when, yeah, when Ferrucci and, and Bourdais were both running up front. So right. I'd expect them to have a pretty solid cars. And um, I know Ed Jones was really happy with the car they had there during the test, same test. So I think he was third or fourth quick, fourth quickest maybe, but yeah, um, yeah no, I think he was very happy with the car. So I think, yeah, no, I think if he's got a good car, you know, it'll take him probably half the race to get used to, you know, the running in traffic and, and what the dirty air does. Cause you know, that's going to be totally different. He's never done that before driving on a wall with all that dirty air, but uh, he'll figure it out. He's a smart guy. And he'll have spent a lot of time. He spends a lot of time on the sim. And I know ta- from talking with the people at, at Honda, they love having him as part of the Honda camp because he's, he's really good at transferring what they learn in the sim and what works in the sim to what actually works on the track. Um, You know, and that's something, you know, at F1 level, they, they do a lot of. So I think that's something that's translated really well. Um, And Honda, I know really likes that side of having him on board. I found it interesting. I didn't realize until a a few weeks back that they've already scoped the racetrack and put it on a simulator. Down in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, No, I know it's amazing, isn't it? It's (laughs) Truly incredible. No, I know it's, it's, it is that, yeah, no, I know everybody's been working really hard. All both manufacturers have had all their drivers in the sim and a lot of days in the sim on this one. Um, you know, there'll be stuff that, that they'll still have to learn. Um, you know, I was talking to Felix Rosenquist earlier and he said the sim for this kind of tracks awesome. Um, you know, it just, it'll save so much time on learning the track. And he said, most of the time it's pretty close to accuracy. So the biggest issue they have is, is the gearing, um, trying to figure out, you know, cause the, he said there'll be five miles an hour off in a corner or on a straight. And that has a big impact on the gearing. He said, you know, the car handles the same, but it's just, the speeds are a little bit off usually. Um, and that's just, you know, it's just the grip level, right? Like, you know, probably when it was scanned, you know, or when, you know, the tire, whatever they've put in for the tire, on the sim isn't quite right, but uh, he said it's so useful. Um, And it's going to be an interesting race. There's a lot of places to pass. Apparently, Uh, you know, you've seen the, you've seen the track map of the two long straightaways. Well, I guess even the the three corners directly after that are all 90 degrees after a long enough straightaway that, and wide enough entries that there's going to be opportunities that three or four spots outside of the long straightaways to pass, which would be fascinating to me i think that'll be really fun um yeah but it's gonna be, you're gonna have to watch the guys take care of their brakes brakes are gonna be something that's uh, definitely um something to watch how the teams cool them and how the drivers keep keep the brakes under them late in the race because it's the last after you come off the bridge there's a, a heavy braking right then another heavy braking right there's five i think five really quick 
heavy braking zones in a row. And they said that really, it, it heats up the brakes. So you're going to have to be very careful, you know, and on those last few corners to, to make sure you still have your brakes underneath you. <laughs> and if they don't, they go chase down Tony Cotton. He designed it. Yes. Yeah. I think it'll be a good track though. It sounds oh, like yeah. it's going to be, be fun. You know, it's a first, it's a first event. I expect some hiccups because that's just the way it goes, but um, you know, they'll get it figured out. It sounds like the the management group at that race is, is willing to spend the money and willing to do what it needs to be successful. So I and I've heard there'll be, they sold 70,000 tickets for Saturday and Sunday each. So it's going to be crazy. It'll be busy. Yeah. So they said, I, somebody told me they thought they had cut off the ticket sales, but I don't know if that's true. There's some individuals tickets, just single day tickets, but no package tickets are left at all. And they've sold out all of the hospitality, which is amazing because they've got some, a lot of hospitality. So, and I know a lot of the sponsors, Aero, you know, NTT, a lot of the sponsors are, are heavy in on this race. So it'll be, you know, it's a good entertainment city. So I think you'll see a lot of sponsor activation at this one too. Have you spent any time in Nashville? A uh, little bit. Yeah. Not a ton, but a little bit. I used to, in my former career, when I was in sales, I was in banking sales. So we used to have conventions in Nashville, you know, every couple of years. So yeah, I have. And it's, it's a fun city. Now I know it's changed a lot too, right? It's party central now. I know all the bachelorette parties are down there. So <laughs> uh, have you ever been to uh, Tootsie's? No, I haven't. So oh. I need to go to Tootsie's, huh? Oh yeah. I'm, I tried I'm, to, I'm writing I that had, down right now. I had Jason uh, Rittenberry on the program a couple of weeks ago. And I said, how about you put the start finish line in front of Tootsie's? I'd go for that one. Nice. But you don't have to worry about whether or not you know, they've cleaned up the city. They haven't cleaned up as far as I know. Tootsie's, it's the same as it was 30 years ago, but it's That's a great place question. to go to. Great place. Yeah. And you never know who's going to be there. They play have music all the time. And you never know who walks in the door. Um, Got to ask you, starting off, did you ever drive race cars? How did you get into motorsports? Uh, no, I, I I did a little bit of karting. Very minor, you know, at my home track. I grew up in an area, a town called Waterloo, Ontario. We had a, an outdoor car track called Herbsville and I went to high school with the family that ran it so I'd go out there and run and I had a old Margay but nothing serious um and that was it the only other time I've ever been in a race car was at um Neil Enerson school at Lucas Oil School of Racing I got to do a, a do that one time which was it was good I learned a lot but um I've been going around like my dad was a huge race fan and uh took me to Mostport and then um, we went to our local quarter mile, you know, paved oval every weekend. Um, and then we traveled around quite a bit to go to some of the bigger stuff, even in Michigan. Um, and then we'd go to the IndyCar race at Michigan. And uh, then when it came to Toronto, we'd go there. And then um, he ended up moving out down here. And I followed a couple of years later. And that's when I started to go to a ton of races. Uh, did you study... Uh journalism did you take writing I, classes um yeah i studied communication um so not like i took a lot of journalism classes pr classes um and i was in sales and i you know i i did a lot of writing um and you know i did a lot of communication classes and uh, you know a lot of speech classes and that type of thing so um that was kind of where my background was in school i went to ended up go, finishing my degree at butler um, in the mid nineties. So how did you hook up with uh, trackside? Um, you know, I first, I don't remember when my first time I appeared anywhere, I think racer had me do fan blogs for a few events. Maybe it was 2012, 2011, maybe 2011. Um, and then I started doing, doing for another overseas site and then Patrick and um, Joe asked me to do, you know, I can't, it was a test. I think I covered a test. And from there, I just, they put me on board the next year and asked if they wanted to cover Road to Indy. And I said, oh, heck yes. And started doing that and then moved into doing everything. And then <laughs> doing a little bit of TV too. I'm actually working, um, Patrick's writing this weekend and I'm working for NBC this weekend. So there you go. Who pays you better, Patrick or? The track side or NBC? Um, no comment. <laughs> they both a, no, NBC definitely. Um, the the other ones, uh, you know, we, we do we. It's not to make a living, but it's it's definitely worthwhile doing. So, but I, I enjoy the TV stuff too. 
It's oh, fun. Sure. Um, before we leave, I want you to tell me, I've promoted your, your track site online to m- numerous people. If somebody, yeah. and I get a lot of comments, where did you get this information? I said, what did I tell you to sign up for? Track site. And I, and I give you credit when I you know, steal, I mean, borrow your stuff and, and put it out. I give you credit for it. If somebody wants to subscribe to you because it isn't that expensive and the stuff you get is unreal. It's $22 a year. If you go to tracksiteonline.com, um, there's a little button on the top left that you can click to subscribe and uh, we'll send you a lot of emails. Um, yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm just working on my, should, should have the preview in your inbox this evening is my hope as I get that done this afternoon. Um, get a few more conference calls to take. But uh, other than that, I'll be pounding away on the keyboard and then uh, leaving first thing tomorrow morning to head down there to get uh, definitely going to do the track walk and kind of tomorrow we'll spend getting, you know, finding, figuring out the lay of the land, uh, you know, new event. It's always interesting to see where stuff's laid out and uh, pit road's going to be very interesting since it's, it's got a 90 degree curve in it. Um, sort of like Toronto does. Um, and pit in and pit out are pretty tight. So it's going to be, you know, it's could be interesting to watch. I think pit road will be a bit of the story. I um, think it's probably going to be a two-stop race just with the distance and, and just looking at everything right now. Um, depends on the tire wear, obviously. But, and, you know, talk about tire wear. This is a big race for Firestone too, right? Bridgestone's yep. headquarters is, is in Nashville. So it's good right. to see them get sort of a home race, right? Like Absolutely. Now, it, you know, it's interesting what's happening with the IndyCar series. And what's the chances that the, I know at one time, Roger Bailey said, when I get 33 cars to start the Freedom 100, I'll retire. He got close. I think he got yeah, he 30. A few times, yeah. Something like that. Is there anything in the future that says Indy Lights is going to grow? Um, yes, there is, actually. I think you're going to see, I think we've got maybe two to three new teams next year would be my guess. Um one of them probably the current IndyCar team. You know, I think they're what, 13 cars this year. I think if we get up to 16, 17, 18 cars, maybe full-time next year. I don't know if you'll see it get a lot bigger than that. It's just, it's a different, you know, it's a different atmosphere. There's different, you know, you used to have more gentlemen drivers, you know, older guys that, that wanted to race, race in, in Indy Lights. And you're not just, you're just not going to get as much of that anymore. It's just a different you know, atmosphere. And, and I, hate you know, you've got to give sports cars credit. They came up with that LMP three platform that it, it's a great platform for, for an older gentleman driver. And it's, you know, it's a lot cheaper than, than Indy lights. Indy lights isn't cheap. So, um, you know, I think if you get 18, 20, maybe would be possible. Um, but, you know, I think you've got to look at how strong the fields have been, right? Like oh, I yeah. think you'll see, there's five or six legitimate IndyCar drivers in this year's Indy Lights field. And I mean, like good IndyCar drivers, right? Like oh, yeah. um, Kyle Kirkwood's going to be a superstar. I'll tell you that right now. I've been saying that for a long time, but he's going to be a superstar. Um, Linus Lundquist, David Malukas, Toby Sowry. You know, there's just so many good drivers in, in lights right now. And, you know, the other two series are pretty healthy too. And they get um, new cars coming next year. Um I think there's 40 orders so far for the, for the new two new cars and a uh, big addition. There's the halo. Uh, the right. two lower levels will have a halo and it, it it's become necessary. Uh, if you want to have European drivers come over here, uh, it's just, it's part of racing now and, you know, people expect it and they just, you know, the, those, the USF and Indy pro cars certainly weren't done with their life span, but, uh, that current tub, they weren't able to put a, a halo on. So there's a new car coming with a halo. Um, not a completely new car. A lot of it's, a lot of it'll be the same wings, tires, suspension will all be carryover. but the tub and, uh, side pod and, um, you know, engine cover will look a little different, but it's not a ton different. It'll just have the halo on it. But I think that'll, you know, I think you'll see, and obviously you've seen USF 2000 this year, right? It's, there's high twenties at every race. Um, Absolutely. And, I, you know. and I think, I think the road to Indy program is their own worst enemy because of the competitiveness 
and where they can go now. It's not a gentleman, you know, run Indy Lights for the thrill of running. These guys are in there to get the Indy car. No, they are. It's no, it's definitely a they're you know, for a long time you looked at some of those series. Now, since Dan's taken over, it hasn't been as much that way. But you know, you look back to the 90s, 80s, 90s. These series were a mix of pro and club racing. Right. Now it's just pro racing, right? Like there's no, there's no club aspect to it at all anymore. Um, you know, these are professional race teams. You can't do it for nearly as cheap a budget as you used to. You have to test. Um, but that makes better drivers down the road, right? So right. it, uh, no, it's definitely a pro series and you're, you're racing against the best. I mean, it's, it's so competitive. Well, when you, you say, you, go ahead. Go ahead. You look at kids that come out of even, you know, a mid packer and in, in Indy pro who goes to sports cars and, and dominates and is ex- extremely successful. It's just, and you said it, it's the competitive nature of open wheel racing that, that breeds these drivers and, and is such a good training ground for a professional driver, whether they're going to Indy car or sports cars or wherever they go, they're not going to, they're going to learn everything they need to know at the USF 2000 level to be a pro. That's just, it's the way it's the way it's gone. And uh, it's, it's a good thing, you know, it's entertaining as heck for us. And I love getting to know these kids when they're young. I think the other interesting part, and I've said this numerous times, there may not be a huge car count, but you don't have to wait a long time to see first to the last car because they're, they run no. pretty close oh, together. Yeah. It's always Indy lights has been really close, you know, even this year's championship, right? Like, yeah, Kirkwood and Malukas are are right there together, and you know, I thought I think everyone thought Kirkwood would dominate, but David Malukas is growing up as a driver, and and he's right there, and you know, I think that's extremely impressive um, what he's done, and both both those guys are going to be superb right. Indy, Indy car drivers. Well, once again, before we go, I want to remind people: if you want to find out, can I get people say, where do you get the information on this team or that team? track site online so if you want to get the pr that goes out and find out what the teams are doing who's testing who's doing what i highly recommend go to tracksiteonline.com and as, as uh, steve set up in the top left hand corner you hit a button and you can subscribe it's only 22 dollars. good grief you lose that much sitting on a couch <laughs> watching the races so uh, i you highly recommend it before i leave for nashville yeah. now we're doing this on wednesday the uh the Nashville race is upcoming starting Friday. Poor Steve has to pack to leave Thursday so he can go on his track walk and kind of look things over. So look forward to your reporting. Will you be doing anything live on NBC? Or are you assisting one of No, nope, I'm behind the scenes like I always am. I'm, I've got a face made for absolutely nothing. So <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to be behind the scenes. I'm working with Dave Burns this, this weekend, which will be fun. I've never worked with Dave. So I'm actually looking – forward to it he's a really good guy so um and he's just he wants to learn so much about indycar he's been really fun to, to have around so uh no working with dave this weekend well it's a good thing he's, he's got somebody that can teach him indycar very quickly so that'll be and i'll be watching it and when i know he does something good i'll know who's behind him making right. it happen <laughs> thanks for your time look forward thanks to for talking to you again down the road uh, when things start to shake out i'll be knocking on your door again sounds good i'm anytime don thanks for being here i my guest has been Steve Wittick. He is a writer for uh, TracksideOnline.com, and he also works for NBC Sports Television at the racetrack. So uh, if you can, I highly recommend subscribe IndyCar or Indy, uh, TracksideOnline.com, and in the top left, hit the button subscribe, $22. Good grief. And you'll find out everything that's going on when people contact me. What's going on? Are they asleep? Are they taking vacation? No. Subscribe and you'll find out what they're doing. Till the next time, we've got some people lined up coming up, so stay with us. Till the next time, Don K saying thanks for watching. See you again. Good night. <laughs>